Okay, we are now live. This is Jack from tofluency.com and welcome to this lesson, the Tofluency Show. I've, I'm bringing back the Tofluency Show, the name for this live English lesson. Now, if you're new here, welcome to you. I have a little free gift for you if you are learning English. Just go to tofluency.com slash book. You can see the link up there and download my book for free, The Five Step Plan for English Fluency. Um, if you've been here before, welcome. Great to have you. Check out the To Fluency program. There is a link in the description. This is my premium program where you can get all the files and the methods and the evaluations that you need in order to improve your English. So, welcome to everybody joining today. We have a fun lesson today. I'm going to go through some memes. Here are some memes on your screen. So we're going to talk about these today. And we're also going to have a look at this lesson and learn some vocabulary related to cars. And there was one more thing I wanted to show you as well, which is this. And we'll talk about this a little bit later on. This is a question somebody asked me. And I think it's a fantastic question. So I wanted to go through it and give you my answers. So we have 58 people watching live. Welcome to you. Please click that like button and then just click the share button and share it with a friend. So click that share button and share it with a friend. We have people from Egypt. Lolly is here again, or Lolly Lolly from France, Kazakhstan. India, London, Brazil. Good to see everyone here at the moment. So today's Tuesday. I have a couple of new lessons coming for you very soon. And I'm going to have a bit of an an announcement as well to give you some fresh news. And I might introduce something. I need your advice on this. I'm going to ask you at the end of the video at the end of today's lesson. So let's get started with some memes, okay? Let's start with this one. I think this one is a really interesting one. So just read the two sentences on your screen. You can see them on your screen. The first one is, flying planes is dangerous. The second one, Flying planes are dangerous. And this comes from the language nerds. Check them out on Facebook. And it also, I think this comes originally from Noam Chomsky in his book. But it's really interesting. Flying planes is dangerous. Flying planes are dangerous. Because there are two meanings here, depending if you use is or are. So, do you know the difference between these two sentences? Flying planes is dangerous, flying planes are dangerous. So, is versus are. Okay, I'm going to explain what it is. So, the first one, flying planes is dangerous. We're using flying here as the, like, the verb noun. So, it's saying when you, as a person, flying a plane, it is dangerous. Okay, so the act of flying a plane is dangerous. The second one, flying planes are dangerous, is like saying, ah, there are planes flying in the sky and they're dangerous. They're dangerous if they come too close to the land. So it's an interesting way to look at it. It's an interesting way to think about it. So flying planes is dangerous. Flying planes are dangerous. Good. Uh, in the chat, we have people from Azerbaijan, Mexico, Manchester. Uh, Alexis is here as well. Marina saying, got it. Fantastic. Hopefully, my connection is okay. I had a little bit of a problem before. Hopefully, it is okay for today's lesson. 
The next one I want to share with you. I found this funny. Me, I need a native speaker to practice for real. Native speaker, hi. Me, nothing. So it's basically saying that people say, oh, I really want a native speaker to practice my English. But then when, when you come or when you find yourself in that situation, you get really shy and nervous and not confident about speaking. And I think that face, that expression, explains this pretty well, this expression. Good. So um, I have a tip on this that I'm going to share soon. I've got a new lesson coming later this week, which, which gives you a good tip to help you overcome your fear of speaking. All right, the next one. For all you non-native English speakers out there, read is pronounced like lead and red is pronounced like lead. Read is pronounced like lead and red is pronounced like lead. This is pretty funny, okay? Because what we have here are two words that have two different ways to say them and they both rhyme. So read, to read, okay? The past tense is read. I read a book. To lead is like a leader leads. We're going to lead the team out. You need to be a better leader to lead the team. Whereas lead is the um, metal. So you can see the difference here. Read lead red lead and i have more of these in my series of why the english language is hard to learn and the conclusion from those videos is always it's not you just have to get used to it okay so there are about 95 people watching live again click that like button and then share this with your friends. I might just need to change my settings a little bit because of the internet connection is not very good today. So maybe that will be better, okay? Hopefully that will be better for you all. Just let me know in the, the live chat, how is the connection? How is the connection? Is it okay? Is it good or is it bad? Is it okay? Is it good or is it bad? The next one. If two witches watched two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Whew. If two witches watched two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Can you repeat that? So repeat this out loud. If you're in bed, if you're at work, if you're at school, if you're on the bus, no matter where you are, just say this, repeat it after me. If two witches watched two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Good, and now the entire phrase. If two witches watched two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Good. Okay, so that is quite difficult to do. This is known as a tongue twister, like Lolly Lolly says. Fantastic. Um, people say the connection is good or okay. If you can't see me, I'm here. Hello. Hello. I'm in this little box. I'm stuck in the box. <laughs> Lolly Lolly says, too difficult teacher. Okay, this is a good way to practice, okay? This is a good way to practice. <laughs> oh, funny. Sorry, I just see a, a strange comment. <laughs> I'm gonna read some comments in a second, they're great. So yeah, this is known as a tongue twister. 
Another one is Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. I'll put this into the chat. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. That one is in the To Fluency program and you can send me your audio recordings and I'll give you feedback on the way that you say these tongue twisters. That is lesson 10 on the pronunciation masterclass. Okay, so Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Okay. Uh, Peter Piper, <laughs> I won't do it again, but I, I like this one. This is a good one that we've just seen on the screen. If two witches watch two watches, which witch would watch which watch? That last part is hard to do. What I recommend is that you find audio for it. For example, inside the to fluency program, to fluency.com slash TFP and just practice, practice it. You can also find the audio online if you don't want to pay for my program and then just listen to it and repeat it. If two witches watch two watches, which, <laughs> which witch would watch which watch and practice as much as you can, okay? It's great practice for you to, to learn the different sounds of English and similar sounds of English too. The other one is like, if I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop, which is good, um, it's a good one. So I saw Susie sitting in a sh shoe shine shop. Let's have a look at the comments. Serge, after your fascinating lessons, I became so proficient in English that non-native speakers now do not understand me. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I keep saying which, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you have to go from which to watch, which, watch. And it's difficult. Two different vowel sounds. How to pronounce months, months. Good, hello from Pakistan, hello from Japan. Jean says really hard. If you are new here, subscribe to this channel. It's great to have you here. We'll come back to that one. Here's another one. <laughs> this is funny. Just just read what it says on the blackboard. It says, tonight's English as a second language class has been canceled. And it's funny because the people in the class, they can't read English at that level yet. So they don't know the class has been cancelled. So they're all sitting there waiting for the teacher. But because it's on the blackboard and they can't read it. Um, this, this is something that people bring up to me. And a great phrasal verb, bring up, to bring up. Bring up. So they mention this to me, they talk about this subject to me. They say, how do you teach people English in English? How do you teach people English in English? And I always say, well, most of my learners and people who follow me have an intermediate level of English or they can understand better than they can speak. So I always say that. They can understand better than they can speak. Um, Denise has a great specific question. How are you? I can't pronounce the f the, properly the following sentence. First thing in the morning. Now, sometimes where I'm from, you'll hear the G sound instead of the, the NG sound, okay? The G instead of the NG. So sometimes I say thing with the G. Now this isn't very common, but it actually happens in, it happens in New York as well. So you'll hear people in New York say Long Island or like Long Island, Long Island. Can't do it, can't do it today. Um, but yeah, the, the problem with that sentence is you have to go from the F to the TH sound first thing in the morning first thing first first thing 
in the morning okay so you have to go from the F to the TH sound okay we'll do a, a paragraph of this and then we'll move on this is talking all about different plurals so look at your screen and read along we'll begin with box the plural is boxes but the plural of ox is oxen not oxes one fowl is a goose and two are called geese yet the plural of moose is never called meese so this is a nice poem which is highlighting highlighting the difference or the irregular plural nouns which I'm sure you know is quite difficult can be quite confusing but as I always say don't think of English as a logical language it's not it's not logical it's just something to learn and videos whatsapp says how can I think in English it's the same type of thing where you have to just internalize all of these different things to, to ensure that you understand them and that you just have them inside you so that they feel right good R Raul Raul I would like to ask if you can pronounce equally permit as a noun or a verb um, no a permit is the noun and permit is the verb okay it's not permitted it's not p p the schwa sound p permitted you need a permit it's not permitted you need a permit okay let's just read another uh, paragraph here or verse you may find a lone mouse or a house full of mice but the plural of house is houses not heis the plural of man is always men but the plural of pan is never pen again highlighting the fact that we don't have rules when it comes to most things in English <laughs> Okay, we've got people from Bangladesh here, from Poland. Please uh, keep leaving me your comments. And we have 46 likes. 47. Please just click that little like button. And if you want to support the channel, click the little dollar sign and send a super chat. Good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we'll come back to this in a second. And I've also got some more things to share here. And I'll leave the link for this website in a second. Um, but now we're going to just move on and just do a little bit of vocabulary for driving. Now, quick yes or no. Who has seen this video? Have you seen this video? Just tell me yes or no in the chat. I released it low Saturday I think and it's all about vocabulary for cars and always when I have these types of lessons go to English phrases from this lesson and you can see all the phrases here and then click the link here and you'll be able to see more examples and explanations of the vocabulary so here we have 73 advanced English phrases for cars and driving. This is very useful for you if you want to learn these types of phrases. And like usual, I'm going to do it in context and also give you sentences because it's best to learn through sentences. This is incredible. Most people haven't watched it. All right, so as soon as this lesson is over, go to my channel and watch this lesson and then share it. I want more people to watch it. Okay. All right, so 
let's just watch a little bit and then I'll talk over it as well and pause the video a bit. I'll give you more examples. Do get your keys. Either find them <laughs> in your house if you constantly misplace them or you need to take them out of your pocket. Then you need to unlock your car, open the door and then get in the car. Okay, so we have a few phrases there. So we're talking about car vocabulary and yeah, we need to unlock, unlock the car. We need to open the car and get in the car. So get in the car. Now you might hear people say, come on, get in the car. This is what parents say to children when the children just refuse to get in the car. This happens a lot. I know I have young children. We're going to have another example with children in a second as well. But come on, get in the car. Come on, get in the car. Let's move on to some more advanced phrases. Now, once you're in the car, you can see here the person putting on their seatbelt. Oh, I need to contact my captions person and change that. So you put on your seatbelt. You can also fasten your seatbelt. Now, you'll hear parents say things like, we're not going anywhere until you put on your seatbelt. We're not going anywhere until you put on your seatbelt. Look, we're not going anywhere until you put on your seatbelt. We can't, we can't go until you put on your seatbelt. So, put on your seatbelt. And then I think a more formal term is fasten. You here fasten especially on planes and then fasten your seatbelt make sure your seatbelt is fastened make sure your seatbelt is fastened do this do I says jump in the car yeah come on jump in the car let's go come on jump in the car that's a really good one so that's more informal jump in the car come on jump in the car let's go Let's just, let's go on a hike tomorrow. Great idea. Okay, let's just wake up, jump in the car and go. So if you jump in the car, it means to get in the car quickly without wasting time. So it's a good one to use. Yeah, jump in the car. Thank you for that, Bua. If their children don't want to put their... So always remember to take off your handbrake and then you start the car. Now, if you're ever late for work and you need an excuse, you can say, I'm sorry I'm late. My car wouldn't start, okay? Yeah, that's it. If you're late for work and you need an excuse, you can say, my car wouldn't start. My car wouldn't start. So this is quite specific in terms of we use it this is a very specific phrase, my car wouldn't start. Whereas other excuses for being late for work are, my alarm didn't go off. My alarm didn't go off. So we're not using wouldn't go off because the when you're talking about a car and in the moment you say, my car won't start. My car won't, it just won't start. It just won't start. So yeah, my car wouldn't start is the past tense of that. What phrasal verb uses to put across the idea, stop the car next to the sidewalk and get out of the car? Pull over. Or park. You can also say park up. Yeah, pull over here and let's get out. I'm gonna pull over here and let you out. So let's say you want to drop someone off. You can say, uh, would here work? I'll pull over here and drop you off. Great question. Someone else says, what about hop in the car? Yep, hop in the car, jump in the car, hop in the car. Come on, hop in the car, let's go. 
Come on, hop in the car. Come on, hop in the car. <laughs> you can tell I say this quite a lot. All right, let's move on to gears. Driving in America and driving in the UK. Now, if you get a car in the UK, it's probably going to be a manual car, which means that you have to change gears. You have to put it into first, put it into second, put it into third, and so on. But if you get... Okay, so a manual car. Again, this just means it's got... You have to change gears. So you have to change gears. So this is common in the UK. Or it was common when I was living there last, about 10 years ago. So maybe things have changed. But what I remember is everyone had a manual car. Nobody had an automatic car. People prefer manual cars. And yeah, put it into, put it into second, put it into third, put it into fourth. So when you're on a highway or a motorway, it's a good idea to put it into fifth once you are going about 50 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour. So put it into, okay? Um, I think I'm gonna have to Put someone in a timeout. So what does buckle up mean? What does buckle up mean? It means to put on your seatbelt. Buckle up. Let's go. I think that's more of an American term. Buckle up. Come on, everyone. Buckle up. As you can see, there are many different ways to say the same thing. Now, it does change the meaning a little bit because again, buckle up is more informal. Fasten your seatbelts, it's more formal for things like planes. And put on your seatbelt is probably the most common way to say it. So it does change it a little bit. But just know that when you're speaking to people, let's say you arrive to America and you ask the Uber driver a question, you might say, Oh, do you have to put on your seatbelt when driving here? I mean, of course you do, but maybe you ask that question. Then that's perfect. It's a great way to answer it. Um, so, yeah, in these situations, it's good to know how to say one, maybe the most common way, but then to understand the other ones in case you need to do it. So buckle up, fasten your seatbelt, put on your seatbelt. Yeah, fasten your shoes or tie your shoelaces. Tie your laces. Okay, let's continue. If you get a car in America, then it's most likely going to be automatic, which means that you just put it into drive and just go. Now, this was a little bit strange for me at first, but I soon got used to it. And it's. Okay, here's a little phrase I soon got used to it. I soon got used to it. Yeah, so in America, cars are automatic. You just put it into drive and go. It was weird at first for me, but um, <laughs> but I soon got used to it and it's normal now. In fact, it's a lot easier. It is a lot easier. You don't have as much control because in the UK or in a manual car, you can drop it into second. Yeah, drop it into second and speed up a little bit and you have a bit more control but it's so much easier it's so much easier is it possible to be all right save general questions save them for the end um we upload this live to your channel yes I don't like automatic cars. What's the difference between get used to and used to? So get used to, it focuses on the process. Just like um, you can say it's dark. Um, it's getting dark. Or it gets dark. The, uh, the, the last two is getting dark and it gets dark. 
It focuses on the change between light and dark. Whereas if you say it's dark, then you focus on the state. So if I say I'm used to automatic cars, then it's saying the state, they're normal to me. You're not talking about the process, but I soon got used to them. It talks about the change from it being weird to it being normal. And by saying soon, it says this change happened quickly. Maybe it took me two days. I soon got used to them. I soon found them normal to me. I soon got used to them. So that, that's a really good question. I've never had an automatic car. I cannot even imagine driving it. It's so easy. Yeah, so there's, you just put it into drive and you just, well, we're gonna look, look at pedals at the moment. You step on the gas, step on the gas. It's very easy. And it just changes, it changes gear for you automatically. You don't even notice it change gear. What's the fine for not fastening the seatbelt when driving? I don't know. Good question though. But I couldn't tell you. I could not tell you. It depends. It probably depends by... Depends on the state you're in. As in North Carolina, South Carolina, New York... Um, I could probably name all the states if I had a lot of time to think about it. 50 states. So much easier just putting your car into drive and going. In an automatic car, you can put the car into reverse, into drive, into a low gear, or into park. Another difference is the amount of pedals in an automatic and manual car. So in an automatic car, you have the brake pedal and then gas. So you can step on the brake or step on the gas. You'll also hear people say, hit the gas. Hit the gas. Go on, hit the gas, let's go. Hit the gas, let's go. And you can also use the, um, the verb to accelerate for both you know accelerate come on speed up accelerate go okay hit the gas in manual cars in the UK you have three pedals the clutch which you need to step on in order to change gears you have the brake and then the accelerator yep so accelerator or, or gas in American English. So you have to step on the clutch um, in order to change gears. That's what makes it more difficult for, especially going from automatic to a manual. That makes it a lot more difficult. A lot more difficult. Uh, in Libya, we just use automatic cars. I can't imagine myself driving a manual. It's too hard. Yeah, this is interesting. I actually had a poll and most people said that they drive or that manual cars are more common in their country. That was quite interesting for me. Okay. So in the UK, we say step on the accelerator in the US, we say, step on the gas. There are various buttons on the dashboard that do certain things. Don't ahead. indicate. Right, to here. I find that a lot of people when driving in America, don't indicate. It drives me crazy. It's incredible. I find this astonishing that people don't indicate. So they don't turn on their indicator when they turn left or when they turn right. And it's it can be quite annoying because what one thing that I like about driving in America is that you can turn right on red. This is a really cool thing. 
So if the red light, if there's a red light, you can still turn right if there are no cars coming. That, is, that was different for me at first. So you can turn right on red. Now, um, but people don't indicate. People don't turn on their indicators when they are making a turn. I'd say about 20% of people indicate when they need to. So if you're at a roundabout, it's very, very rare that people indicate. If people are turning right, I'd say 20% of people will indicate to let other cars and pedestrians know that they are turning right. This is useful information for everyone else, but people just don't do it. It's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. This is very frustrating because yeah. you don't know where the car is going to go next. And this is useful information for other drivers and for pedestrians. I find that in the UK, people indicate all the time. Now, it might just be where I live in America, but this is something I have definitely noticed. So that's right. It might just be the town we live in, but it is something I've noticed. So maybe in other cities, big cities maybe, people indicate a lot. Um, in Ukraine, there are special green arrows if it is possible to turn right on red. Yeah, they have those here to say you can definitely turn right. But if the traffic light is red, you can still turn right even though it's red, if that makes sense. Do people indicate where you are? Let me know in the chat. Do people indicate where you are in your country? What do you mean by indicate? So, to turn on your blinkers, your flashlight, your, no, your blinkers, your turn single signal, or your indicators. So it's that little flashing light. If you want to go right on your car, it flashes to say, hey, this car is going right. So let me know in the, the chat if you do it, or if people do it where you live. Oh, Gemma lives in Spain. She says no. There was a big difference in Spain between drivers in Bilbao and drivers in Valencia. In Bilbao, people drove, well, not slowly, but safely. They didn't speed. They indicated in Valencia, the traffic and the drivers were crazy. They went very fast. They didn't indicate. Um, it was more dangerous crossing the road in Valencia. In Chile, always. So people always indicate in Chile. In Ukraine, people indicate the turn, but why Americans do not? Um, now I live in Sydney and it's the same. So, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's one of those things that I don't know why people don't do it. It's just the culture sometimes or habits. I don't know. Maybe it's just in the town where I live. So Anita has a question. What does it mean, keep clear, and it's written on the road? Yeah, so look at the video. There's a sign, if I just get that car out of the way. Nope. So the noun here. There. <laughs> It says keep clear. What it means is, this, you can see all the different traffic lights. This is probably in London somewhere because of all the traffic. But what it means is you can't stay in that little area. So if you think that ahead the traffic is too busy, you can't stay in that area. In there's also known as like, What's it called? A box junction or something. Um, 
Yeah, it's something like that. So it means if you're in this, if you're where that van is, and you look ahead and there's traffic, then you stay there until it clears. So you can't wait in that little area. That was a good question. It's quite difficult to explain. Um, got a lot of other questions. Yeah, it's saying they have to. It's not a matter if they want to or not. Law says they have to. And to be honest, it's just common sense. Yeah. I do it all the time, even in the middle of the night. So many people don't. I hate it. Toronto, um, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, I do it. Uh, yeah. Even if you don't see any cars or any pedestrians, still indicate. Because you might miss a car or a pedestrian. 50% maybe in Iran. I'm in the UK and most people don't. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe it's changed since I've been there. If people don't, it will be bad driving. No, they don't. I'm a rider and it's seeing that people in cars don't care about us. It's very frustrating. Yeah, cyclist, a cyclist. Only females indicate here. Very interesting. Keep the intersection clear. Very good, Valentina. In Greece, indicate whenever they remember. Yes, most Taiwanese indicate. In Korea, no indications during turn. You get a fine from a... Oh, yeah, so if you don't indicate and you turn, you get a fine. Um, okay, the same in France. Most people don't. It's interesting. Right, we'll do a few more minutes of this video. Here in the UK is indicators. And in America, you'll hear people say blinkers or turn signals. Bit. Okay. Let's set off at 7 a.m. Or do you think we should set off early morning? Okay, this is another, another phrase I wanted to introduce to set off. Set off. Which means to start your journey. So let's set off at 7 a.m. Let's set off at 7 a.m. Um, do you think we should set off early in the morning? What time do you think we should set off? Our friends are setting off at 7. Let's set off at 6 and beat them. So, yeah, there are different ways to say that, but set off is a great one for starting a journey. The next one. Let's get a good night's sleep. It's a long drive. And the last... It's a long drive. Let's get a good night's sleep. Let's get a good night's sleep. So a long drive, um, a short drive. But this is so common. Oh, it's a long drive. We've got a long drive tomorrow. We've got a long drive tomorrow. Let's get a good night's sleep. Let's get a good night's sleep. Last one I want to share with you is this: a backseat driver. Now, a backseat driver. A backseat driver. This is a good one. Somebody who is constantly telling you how to drive your car. I've put it into second gear. Go a little bit faster here. Oh, it's this. Turn here. Turn here. Turn here. So somebody who's constantly giving instructions to the driver on how to drive the car. That is a backseat driver. Okay, good. So, um, what I want you to do, again, is to go watch that lesson. I'll leave a link in the live chat. Oh, here it is. And also, I'll leave a link on the, the page in the comment section so that you can watch that lesson after this. Watch it about two or three times. And what I think is a good idea is to watch it at normal speed. Then watch it at 1.25 and then watch it at 1.5 and then see if you can watch it at 2. So speed up the video a little bit. This is something I'm exploring at the moment. It might seem counterintuitive, which is a great phrase. It might seem strange that you should speed up the video when you're learning English, but 
I want you to try this over the next few days. So, speed up the video, okay? Do it at 1.25, then 1.5, then at two. And then just see if you understand it. And I think this might help with memory retention and just your ability to listen to things that are a little bit faster. Marina says, or Lolly says, I can't bear backseat drivers. Good, I can't bear them. I can't stand them. They annoy me. And Marina, I am a backseat driver. I am as well. I'm definitely a backseat driver. Valentina, love road trips, hate backseat drivers. My husband is a backseat driver. He is always trying to help me. That lesson about cars is full of phrasal verbs. I know. I realized that most things are full of phrasal verbs. <laughs> phrasal verbs are so common. They're incredibly common in everyday English. So definitely, you know, think about this. Think about phrasal verbs. A good thing, I, I might do in a, um, might do research on this to see how many verbs are used, how many phrasal verbs are used, and then maybe how many idioms are used in a natural conversation. It depends on the, the conversation, but we'll see. Lolly says, okay, I'll do it. Gemma says, really, Jack, a new method? Yeah, try it out. See how it goes. Speed up the audio. Watch it first at normal speed, then speed it up, then speed it up again, and speed it up again. Um, Chaminda, save that for later. I sometimes speed up the learning materials, especially VOA, Voice of America. Yeah. Do you find it helps, um, Sergi? Do you find it helps? Do you think it helps? All right, let's go do something fun now. Um, there's going to be a little bit of swearing here. Okay, so I am not going to swear. You're not going to see a swear word, but there is going to be like this involved. F star star K. So if you're quite sensitive or if you don't want your children to see this, then maybe skip ahead. But I think you're going to be okay. But why does English have a word for defenestration? defenestration which means the act of throwing someone out of the window out of a window but not the day after tomorrow okay so that's kind of interesting saying that but somebody says because you're not looking hard enough over morrow equals the day after tomorrow let's just see this over morrow don't think I've heard this, but it means the day after tomorrow, over morrow. I haven't heard it. I've not heard people use that, but that, that's pretty in interesting. Okay, the next one. These are English memes again. Your fingers have fingertips but your toes don't have tip toe tips. Yet you can tip toe, but not tip finger. Your fingers have fingertips, but your toes don't have toe tips. Yet you can't tip toe, but not tip finger. So your fingertips are the end of your fingers, but you don't say that for your toes. You don't say your toe tips, but to tip toe, is to walk. Let's just get a, a video of this. Let's just see. Um, tip toe GIF, so you can see. Hopefully this is gonna work. Oh yeah. That's the tiptoe, he's going very quickly. Is that tiptoe in? I don't think so. Let's see uh, another picture. Yeah, that, that's more like tiptoeing. To walk slowly, 
in that way so that nobody hears you. Homer Simpson. <laughs> so that, that's to tiptoe, so no one hears you. Your fingers have fingertips, but your toes don't have toe tips, yet you can tiptoe, but not tip finger. I like this one. Synonyms are weird, because if you invite someone to your cottage in the forest, it sounds nice and cosy. But if I invite you to my cabin in the woods, then you're going to die. So this one is a good one, because basically they're the same thing. You know, a cottage and a cabin, very similar. Forest, woods, again, mean the same thing. But a cottage in the forest, it sounds lovely. Do you want to come to our cottage in the forest later? We'll have a barbecue, we'll have a fire, we'll play games outside. But I've got a cabin in the woods. Then it suggests you're in a horror movie. So again, this is just a, a fun difference between these two things. Okay. If you're enjoying this lesson and you haven't done so yet, just click that like button. It helps the channel and lets other people know that maybe they should learn English with me, Jack, from to Fluency. And then if you want to really help, you can share it with your friends. The past tense of William Shakespeare would be, would I was shook speared. Would I was shook speared. Because will, would, I am, I was, shake, shook, spear, speared. Which is pretty cool. Would I was shook speared. Uh, we'll m skip number five. You can have a look at the link later. It's a good one, though. English is weird. Horror. Horrible. Horrific. Terror. Terrible. Terrific. So you can see the faces here talking about if these are good words or good emotions or bad emotions. Horror. That's, you know, scary. Horrible. Terrible, horrific, really bad, terror, ah, terrible, awful, terrific. That's terrific, which means it's amazing, terrific. So again, just highlighting that English is fun. It's not hard, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Oh. I'm going to have to get rid of somebody. Okay, so let's just read the comments before we go back. Uh, such a long video. Yep, Ronan, good to see you here. I saw that Liverpool won 3 1 in the end. Homer doesn't want Marge to hear him get in the beer. Valentina, that is excellent. So, yeah, Homer was tiptoeing and he didn't want Marge to hear him getting the beer. Ronan says, it takes me so long to watch. Well, just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Um, so she says, I do not know how effective it is speeding up learning materials compared with natural speech, but it's definitely better than slow learning materials. Yeah, I also think that speeding things up just allows you to increase your ability to listen to things. I'm going to do some research on this soon. Um, yeah, awesome and awful. That's true. Those two words are quite similar in the spelling or, 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 some, awful. There's another one I realized yesterday because I was sending a message to my soccer team and I used the word down and I nearly used the word up for for some variety. Who's down for playing playing tomorrow? Okay. Who's up for playing 
tomorrow. Who's down for playing tomorrow? Who's up for playing tomorrow? They both mean the same thing. How strange is that? Down and up. Who's down for playing tomorrow? Who's up for playing tomorrow? It's weird, isn't it? But it both both of those things mean who wants to play tomorrow or who is going to play tomorrow. It's a very strange one. All right, number seven. Jail and prison are synonyms, but jailer and prisoner are antonyms. So jail and prison means the same thing. Means the same thing. He's going to jail, he's going to prison. But a jailer is somebody who puts somebody into prison, and a prisoner is somebody who is in prison. It's funny. <laughs> My boyfriend's first language isn't English, and he asked me how to say cut in the past tense, and I said cut. And he let out a wail of anguish and fell to the ground. I mean, this is, there are a few of these, aren't there? Like, cut, cut, cut. Um, put, put, put. I can't think of another one. Yeah, cut, cut, cut. Put, put, put. It can be frustrating, but you get used to it. The word Q is just a Q followed by four silent letters. <laughs> it's so true. The word Q is just a Q followed by four silent letters. And I think this is why not a lot of people know how to spell Q. Get in the Q. Come on. Get in the Q. Now this one's going to be a bit difficult to understand. How to use and five times in a row grammatically. Okay. A man owned a store called This and That and hired another man to make a sign for it. When it was finished, the owner inspected the work. He discovered that the spaces were wrong, so he said, the space between this and 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 that is different. The space between this and 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 that is different. Please fix it. That is very advanced, okay? Very advanced. So um, take your time to think about that. Number 11. Why is W called a double U when it is clearly a double V? So true. And someone says here, in French, it's called a double V. It is in uh, Spanish, isn't it? UV doble. So why is W called a double U when it's clearly a double V? There you go. Pronouncing words that end in O-U-G-H. Cough, bow, I think. Rough, do, through, though. Oh, buh. Is it buh? I don't know what, what that one would be. I don't know what that means. Let's have a look. Bow. Boo. Bow. Bow. Of course, it's a main branch of a tree. Rock a bye baby in the tree chops. When the bow breaks, the baby will rock. Um where was I? Go back here. Yeah. Cough, bow, rough, doe, through, though. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think there are eight different ways to pronounce O U G H. Cough, bow, rough, doe, through, though. There's also or, bought, or, bought, bought, bought. That is another one. Right, we're gonna we're getting close to questions and answers. Uh, we won't use that one. I like this. I, for one, like Roman numerals. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Is the S or the C in scent silent? <laughs> 
Is the S <laughs> or the C in scent silent? Because you have here scent, scent, and scent. Scent, scent, scent. Scent, scent, scent. It's annoying that, isn't it? And the scent, the last one is the smell of something. How something smells. Okay, we have 101 likes, everybody. 101 likes. Um, so, thank you all for being here. We have not finished yet. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going today. So, please like this video and share it. Let's keep going. Let's try and get um, 150 likes by the end of the video. Hello, Jack. I would like to ask you something. Please tell me about R sound when we pronounce it. We won't link in R and so on. Thank you in advance. So the there's something called roticity in English where either the the dialect is either rhotic or non-rhotic. So, for example, if you look at these two words, and this is a British English term, we say car park. There is no R sound in there. We drop the R. But in American English, you'll hear car park. Car park. Also in, I think, Irish English, car park. Hello. Ireland, car park. It's hard. Hard. So the word hard, <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little here. You'll hear the R sound in the Irish dialect. The American one too, and I think the Scottish. Hard, that's Irish again. But in in English, from England, you'll hear hard, hard, no R sound. It's also words like brother when there's a schwa sound at the end. The mainly in British English, you'll drop the R. Brother, brother. In American English, it's more like brother, brother, okay? Um, so yeah, it's it's that, 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 that's how it's used in that sense. So there are, I think, four ways that you can drop the R sound. That's why it can get a little bit confusing. And then you also talk about linking words. Yeah, so sometimes you drop the R, but it link. you hear it again when you link the word together. It's quite a long topic, that, actually. How to pronounce this and these. This, these, this, these. Is the word rather British? It is less than very or the same. Yet yeah, rather is a British term. It's rather quiet in here. It's rather quiet in here, for example. Is there a difference between the words man and men? Yeah, man, men. Man, men. Hi, Michael from Brazil here. My first time, actually. You're such a good teacher and don't stop the class. Go ahead. The more we will listen to the more we learn. The more we listen, the more we learn. Well, thank you, Michael. Good to have you. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Ding. <laughs> I'm watching from Poland. Good to have you. I want to practice speaking English, but I don't know how to practice on my own. And I'm shy to make video calls with English speakers on the internet. Can you recommend me some methods? Yeah. If you go to this link here, this is the method I recommend to help you practice your speaking on your own. It's a great method to use. And it what, what you do is you listen to audio, you repeat it, you record your version, and then you compare your version to the original. So it's a really good method to use. And if you want the um if you want to get some materials with this and to get feedback, um, because you get feedback on your speaking, then go to the to fluency program 
okay? To fluency.com slash TFP. I'll leave the little link in the live chat as well. And if you're watching the replay, welcome to you. Um, be sure to check out the live chat to see all the comments. Francisco Ruiz is here from Cordoba. Which one is the right phrase? In the road or on the road? In the street or on the street? Okay, in the road. Something in the road or on the road? It depends. So, my ball went into the road. Okay? Or my ball, just to do it this way, is in the road. Whereas you would say, let's get on the road first thing in the morning. Let's get on the road, which means let's set off first thing, first thing in the morning. In the street or on the street, again, it, it just depends on the context. What I recommend doing is doing a quick search for that and then looking up all the different phrases and example sentences that people give you and then going from there, okay? And then internalizing those sentences. Let's go back to this. <laughs> Why does my nose run and my feet smell? <laughs> That's really funny. That is really funny. Um, my nose, my nose is running a lot today, which means you have a cold and stuff is coming out of your nose. I've got a runny nose. My feet smell. My feet smell. Whereas, you know, obviously the verb to run, you use your feet to run and you use your nose to smell. Okay, look at this one. Do you know, I can't highlight it, but do you know how to say those two states? Do you know how to say, how to pronounce those two states? So the first one is Kansas. Kansas. The second one looks like it should be Arkansas, but it's Arkansas. Arkansas, Arkansas. It's quite confusing. But the fact that Kansas and Arkansas are pronounced differently bothers me way more than it should. Yeah, that is quite funny. Yeah, so Arkansas. It's got the or sound at the end. Arkansas, Arkansas. Now I'm making a video on how to pronounce the diff or these 10 counties in England. And I'm going to do one on the American states as well, which I think will be fun. So Kansas, Arkansas, um, as I say, it can get very confusing. All right, guys, keep the questions coming, keep your comments coming. Um, this is a big one. So, I before E. So people, you learned in school that it's always I before E except for after C. It's just not true. I don't know why this is taught, but I before E except for when you run a feisty heist on a weird beige foreign neighbor. A weird beige foreign neighbor. So it's just not true. This is, you know, people like to do rules because then they can use the language and think about it in a logical way. But, you know, it's it's one of those things. Don't let it get to you, <laughs> Arkansas. The English language is strange. English is weird. Okay, again. Read and lead. No, sorry. Read and lead rhyme and red and lead rhyme but read and lead don't rhyme neither do red and lead we've discussed that one i'm going to do housework and then do homework is a completely acceptable sentence in the english language 
yeah, so housework and homework. Sounds like they're the same thing, but this is good. This is one of those examples where because you've just heard homework so many times, you don't even think about it as it being similar to the word housework. And that highlights my point where it's not about thinking about it logically, but if you just internalize and if you use the sentence method and you get used to all these different phrases and sentences and you learn them in context, then it's going to help you. You're not going to think about the rules when you speak. So someone else has another state. Yeah, Massachusetts. Housework is washing up dishes. Yeah, housework is cleaning the house. Homework is doing math or English. This is another good one. Fat chance and slim chance mean the same thing. Fat chance and slim chance. So fat, <laughs> fat chance, slim chance mean the same thing. It means not a a small it means a small possibility of something happening a small possibility of something happening let's have a look let's just have a look they're not getting as good now All right. Why are Zoe and Zoe pronounced the same, but Joey and Joe aren't? There's another good one. Zoe and Zoe, but Joey and Joe. You can drink a drink, but you can't food a food. Come on, drink your drink. You hear people say this. Come on, drink your drink. Come on, drink your drink. Drink your drink and then we can go. Drink your drink and then we can go. <laughs> Good. All right, let's do questions now. Any questions for me about learning English or about grammar or vocabulary or anything else? This is your chance to ask me any questions that you have. Um, what I want you to do also is check out this new blog post. You can watch the car lesson here, and you can also read the descriptions and everything else with this, okay? So, Maria says, thank you so much, Jack. I would like to ask you one question. For example, do you pronounce um, R? Oh yeah, okay. There are. Yeah, so there's no R in there, there are. There are, we don't have the vowel sound, the R sound, sorry. There are, there are. How to pronounce liter? L oh, oh yeah, this is the big one. So you, I think there are three ways to pronounce this, but in American English, it's literally. So you say all the syllables, literally, literally. In British English, it's more literally, lit. Truly. What's the difference between every day and every day? Yeah, so one is like used as an adjective, one is like a, a time expression. I do it every day. Or I like to do this sentence. I learn every day English every day. So the first one, the first bit, where there's no where well, it's one word, that is saying the type of English that people use, everyday English, normal, common English. Whereas every day is telling you that you study each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What's the difference between I have enough, I had enough, and I got enough? Um, so I have enough and I got enough 
let's have a look. So I have enough. I have enough milk. It's not the best example. Um, I have enough time. Don't worry about it. I have enough time. I had enough time in the past. Okay. Means that was in the past. And I got in, I got enough time. I got enough time. It's more, it's similar to I have enough time, but more informal. Please explain the difference between these two sentences. Treating the patient daily is important. It is important that the patient is treated daily. So yeah, what one is in the passive, one isn't. And when you put something in the passive, you just change the emphasis a little bit. The second one is is more f formal from the way I've seen it. Um, it is important that the patient is treated daily. So it's just it's put in the pa the passive. Here, Brazil bread is countable, so we can say two breads, etc. How can I order or ask for bread in English? Um, a kilo. Well, a kilo of bread is a lot of bread. No, it's mainly like a loaf of bread. A loaf of bread. That's what you say. A loaf of bread. So you hear people say, get a couple of loaves. We're going through bread a lot. Get a couple of loaves. So get a couple of loaves of bread. Jack, one more and I'll stop. Entrepreneur. On tre pre no en, en, entrepreneur <laughs> sorry could you pronounce aunt the way you always say it yeah aunt 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 there aren't many people here we can also say i had enough of this i'm tired is it correct? Oh, I've had. I've had enough of this. Yeah, it's good to give example sentences. I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this. Which means you're fed up. You don't want to do anything else. I've had enough of this. No more. What's the best way to understand numbers in English? For, for instance, yeah, it depends. That's a good question. So let's just, I was going to give my phone number. Let's just say this is a phone number. Okay, you say 310-987-654. Um, so, yeah, well, what's your number? Oh, 310-987-654. Whereas if it's a credit card number, then it'll be 9988-4402-01. Whereas if it's a postcode, 288 And something in American English, they don't say double O, like double O seven. That's interesting. They'll just say zero zero. Seven. It's not quite as fun, is it? Hi, I'm James Bond. Zero, zero, seven. Double, oh, seven. What's the difference between I am still here and I am always here? Yeah, I'm, al I'm always here for you, which means I'm always going to help you if you need it. Or if you need to talk to somebody, then I'm always going to be available to talk to you. I'm always here for you. Whereas I'm still here, it's more of an everyday English term to say like, I'm at the gym, I'm still here. Are you coming? Are you coming? I'm still here. The name's Bond, James Bond. I hear so many times go ahead, but I don't understand ahead. What is ahead? So, if you if someone says go ahead, it usually means you talk now. Or if you're walking, 
And it's that awkward or strange situation where you both go to the door and you open the door for someone. You can say, go ahead, which means you go first. You enter the door first. So to go ahead. Um, but it can be used in speaking as well. Um, you say, oh, sorry, go ahead. If you're not sure who needs to speak first. Is it more informal to say have got? I thought it was practically the same nowadays. At least there are lots of people who said, uh, who say, it of, do you have, have you got? It's. I wouldn't say it's informal. It's British though. So it's not used in American English. Have you got a pen? It probably is a little bit more informal, but it's everyday English. Okay, everyday English. Yeah. Have you got a pen? Have you got some time? Have you got a minute? Have you got a minute? Sure. I have a question. I go through, oh, I've got a question. I go through some procedures. In the end, I want to ask to make sure it is finished. What do I ask? Could you give an, just be a bit more specific about that. Okay, we have had 2,200 people watch this lesson so far. Again, please click the like button if you haven't done so yet and share it with your friends. Are there any phrases to describe a crazy driver or someone who doesn't follow the rules? There are many phrases you can use here. Um, yeah, <laughs> many phrases many phrases um but if you're looking for something specific you could just say a bad driver to describe someone a bad driver he's such a bad driver she is such a bad driver it's a good question though Someone's been more specific. I've got a brother or I have a brother. Which one should we say in English? Either. Yeah, I've got two brothers. I have two brothers. Again, it just depends. Like in, in the UK, you can use both. In American English, just use I have. Good. Let's just do a few more of these phrases. Um, if you look on your screen now, I'm just going to go to rush hour traffic. Okay, so oh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, rush hour traffic. So nobody likes getting stuck in traffic. And rush hour traffic is the typical traffic you get when it's the end of the day or, you know, it's getting to, I'll just zoom in a little bit or when most people finish or start work. So here's some more examples similar to this. I'm going to be a little late, I'm stuck in traffic. So this is another excuse or reason you can give your boss if you're late for work. I'm so sorry, I'm gonna be a little late, I'm stuck in traffic. So it's to be stuck in traffic. Has there been an accident? We're just not moving. So sometimes you're stuck in a traffic jam and you're not moving at all. Maybe you don't move for like 10, 15 minutes and you say, has there been an accident? Usually there is an accident if you're stuck, if you're not moving at all. This is a good one. Try and avoid rush hour traffic if you can. Try and avoid. So I like this term, to try and avoid something which is saying, do your best to avoid. If you can, avoid. Instead of just being so direct and say, avoid. And the next one, it's bumper to bumper, which is when cars are so close to each other and people aren't moving. Good. Okay, just go back to the chat. I really like your use of the glottal T. Yeah, got. 
have you got? Okay, about numbers I mean. Is it better to listen to or pronounce? The most difficult for me numbers that consist of two numbers, for example, 19, 15, 21 and so on. I will say this, native speakers normally have to confirm numbers. And I can't tell you the amount of times that you, you give a number over the phone and they say, I'm sorry, what was that last number again? It's difficult for native speakers too. So know that this is a common problem. It's not just about levels of English. But you want to know, is it better to listen to or pronounce? Do both. Um, actually, there was a study that showed that the ability to say sounds and numbers or any words in English increases your comprehension too. So if you can make that sound and practice it, then you can increase it. Um, heavy traffic, Lolly Lolly says, yeah, heavy traffic. So Lolly Lolly has been here since the start of the lesson. You've been here for nearly an hour and a half. Fantastic. Anyone else here? Was was anyone there? Was anyone else here at the start of the lesson? Let me know. Do you use the glottal T in American English too? Um I wonder if people use it as much. I think so. I think so. Got yeah, I got, I got a new job. I got a new job. <coughs> Lisa wants to wants me to read these words. Tough, though, thought through, thorough, or thorough, throughout. I always confirm numbers. I frequently get them wrong. I use Google Map traffic to avoid road jams or traffic jams. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a good way to do it. Valentina says, I'm running late because of the traffic. Gemma's been here since the beginning. So is Eustinus and Maria. Very good. All right, let's learn some more phrases. Um, this one, let's do speed up and slow down. So, to speed up and slow down, you can also go faster. Oh, I don't know why I keep putting the S there. I kept deleting that S. I don't know why it's there. Okay, speed up or slow down. You can also go faster or go slower. Slow down a little. These are tight bends. This is a good one. Tight bend. I'm going to show you an example of a tight bend driving tight bend it's like this oh this is a good example that's a tight bend so it's when you have to when there's a big turn a, a corner so it's a sharp turn as well you can also say a sharp turn that's another way to say it so, yeah, slow down a little, these are tight bends. Speed up a little, you're only going 45 in a 60. So, to go 45 in a 60. To say in a 60 means in a 60 mile per hour zone. But this is, people short that shorten this down. You're only going 45 in a 60. And the next one is, can you go a little slower? I'm getting car sick. Getting car sick. Do you get car sick? Let me know. Do you get car sick? Let's go back to the comments. I was also from the start of the lesson, but the first 10 minutes I had a meal. Very good. What What did you have, Sergi? Or well, it's probably Sergey, right? Let me know, Sergey. Laylee says, I've been here since the start of the lesson as well. All right, Ting Zhu, 
I'm so this is talking about the end of the process okay I'm doing something which I'm not familiar with at the end of the process I want to ask if I'm finished or there is more to do oh yeah um you can say am I done am I done or have I done it so am I done is saying is this the end of the task have I done it means have I done it correctly have i completed the task have i done it am i done or have i done it live lessons are a good way to train writing and writing also help to increase fluency and accuracy yeah i agree valentina can you can you go any slower speed up a little yeah this is a good way this has been sarcastic can you go any slower or i don't think we can go any slower don't think you can go any slower. Um, we also had the backseat driver before. Stop being a backseat driver. He's a bit of a backseat driver. And this is a, f a phrase that you'll hear people say. You're a bit close to that car in front. You're a bit close to that car in front. So that, that's another way to say it. Valentina says, joined at about 25 minutes. Burb my son's lunch because of you. I think it's worth it. You can always make him something else. You can always make him something else. This is my first live lesson today. I am so lucky. Well, great to have you here, Justinus. Justinus, great to have you. Right, let's see if we can find any more of these. <gasps> this is a good one. It blows my mind that English has no plural for you. It's actually a map, isn't there? You plural map. This is a, a problem in English. Here it is. This is amazing. Oh no, that's soda and pop. All right, let's make this bigger if we can. This is the Daily Mail. We'll zoom in. It also zooms the ad ads in. All right. So what words do you use to address a group of two more people? You guys over here. You is blue. Y'all is green and you all is yellow it's not the best map because i don't see any blue but maybe no one uses that but yeah in in where i live in the south y'all is very common yeah do y'all y'all that's such an interesting little reduction do you all becomes y'all Joe wanna go? Joe wanna do it? Or my southern accent. Joe wanna go? <laughs> Not the best. I'm practicing my accents at the moment. Because in the American South, things can get really relaxed. So, Joe, um, there's also use. I think in New York, you hear use. And it's the same in the UK or parts of the UK. I remember my wife is American and she was visiting England. We're walking into a pub actually. And there were two girls and they came over and they says, Do any of do any of you have a lighter? Do any of you have a lighter? Any of you have a lighter? That's more of a Lancastrian accent. A Lancashire accent. Do any of you have an accent? Sorry. Do any of you have a lighter? So, use, y'all. And then it can be a problem because you can also just use you. Do you want to go? But it's not that easy because... 
you have to clarify a lot of the time if you want more than one person. So, do you want to go? Do you want to go? Do you all want to go? Do you guys want to go? Do you all want to go? So, I would say, you guys is quite common. Y'all and yous. But that's that's something is that is strange about English. What is the difference between crush and crash? Crush, crash. Crush, crash. Um, Sergey. I'm, I want to say this properly, but Sergey, Sergey, Sergey. I ate rice with meat. Very nice. <laughs> but that, that is a problem, isn't it? You, you guys, etc. Um, what's this? Do you call coleslaw sla? Oh, yeah. So, coleslaw is that dish of cabbage and mayonnaise and vinegar, I think. And you call it sla, sla. So people around where I live, yes, they do. Oh yeah. This is caramel or caramel, caramel. These are different maps. This is interesting. What you call a long sandwich that contains cold cuts, lettuce, and so on, like a subway sandwich. So most people call it a sub, subway. Not many people call a oh yeah, hoagie. Where is that? That's New York State. So it might be like Boston. No, Boston's up here. Connecticut, maybe? Maybe it's New York. I'll move on. Um, oh yeah, pecan. Or pecan. Pecan pie. What is the city? <gasps> wow, that's interesting. So yeah, I'm going I'm going into the city today. I'm gonna go into the city. So it depends where you live. New York City, Chicago, or another, or Boston. So New York City's here, but Chicago or other here, that's other. Chicago's green, which is next to Chicago. <laughs> bean, bin. So you can either be bin, set, ben. I don't think anyone uses it. Why wow, they do? And bean. I use both bean and bin. Have you been? Have you been? Have you been to Boston? Have you been to Boston? I use both. The second vowel in pajamas. It's either the one in father, pajama, or pajama, jam, pajama, pajama, pajama. This is interesting. Move on from that. How do you pronounce Mary, Mary, Mary? All three are the same. Wow. Wow. That is so interesting. And I know in New York, green, all three are different. Mary, Mary, Mary. But they pronounce it the same. Mary, Mary, Mary. <laughs> crayon. I say crayon. Um... So some people say crayon, dawn, crayon, wow, I say crayon. Uh, let's see, well let's do the soda one, I'm sure they had the soda one up here. Let's just see, soda. Here it is. What is your generic term for a sweetened carbonated beverage? 
soda, okay, pop, coke, <laughs> soft drink. So soda is big in the northeast. Is that St. Louis here? That's interesting. And also California. Whereas pop is what we call it in the UK, is popular in the Midwest. Now, people just call it Coke here because Coke was invented in Georgia. And let me get my bearings. I think that's Georgia. No. This is terrible. That's Georgia. That is Georgia. Yeah. This one here. Anyway, wow, 110 people are here. <laughs> you have to brush up on your geography idea. I have to brush up on it. I have to get better at it. How do you pronounce to distinguish a White House and White House? With this one, this is interesting because you would just say the, the White House. But context is key here. So you would say like, you know, the, the White House, the White House on our street is big. Or turn right at the White House. It's all about context. You know you're not talking about where the president lives, you know, it's different. Mary, it's my first live. Well, fantastic. Again, subscribe, click on the like button, and uh, share this lesson. We say pop or soft drink in Canada. What is the time now where you all live? <laughs> it's great, love that. So it is 120 here. Valentina says, what if it is Pepsi? Yeah, I think, so they'll just say Coke. Um, Pepsi, I think, was invented in the Carolinas. North Carolina, where I live, and South Carolina. North Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina and South Carolina, in Charleston. It's a lovely place to be at this time of the year. I'm working on my accents. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Marius has a great comment. I must admit, I love British English, especially when it is spoken by Jack. Well, thank you so much. Mary, oh, a better way to say this is what a useful class. And that reminds me. Here is a question I had before I wanted to share. You can see it on your screen now. It says, hi, hi Jack. <laughs> Don't say that on a plane. Hi Jack, how's it going? I am Emney. Thanks for every, everything you've done so far. It was a lot to me and helped me very much. Today, I have a question for you about something I heard from one movie that I saw a long time ago. I don't exactly remember the title of the movie, but I know that Jackie Chan plays the leading character in the movie. I think it's going to be Rush Hour. I used to love Rush Hour 2. I watched Rush Hour 2 a lot. I don't know why, but I watched it a lot. But my question is this. What is, where is what? To make my question more clear, I heard the question while Jackie Chan and one of the actresses were talking. Here is their dialogue. The, the actress, where is it? Jackie Chan, where is what? Now, my question is about Jackie Chan's response, where is what? Because I've never read or heard about this before. Um, so basically, if someone says like, where is it? And you say, where is what? You're asking what the it equals. A good example is this. My, my wife might say, oh, have you seen it? Have you seen it? I say, well, have I seen what? I'm asking what it is. And then she says, 
my phone. Have you seen it? I say, yeah. It's next to your bed. Where it always is. It's next to your bed. So, have I seen it? Have I seen what? Have you been there? Have I been where? So this is such a, an interesting question. I wanted to share it. I got this email uh, yesterday, I think, or today. So, where is it? Where is what? Where's the library? <laughs> Where's the bus station? So it's asking to clarify what that person is using for it. Where is it? Where is what? Mary says, I really need to improve my speaking skills, dear teacher. So go to tofluency.com slash speaking. I have a method for you. Sully says, thank you, Jack, my second live lesson and very good again. Well, thank you so much for being here. It is great to have you. It's very good to have you. Um, maps of English used UK. Let's do the UK version now. Maps of English. Um, let's just put vocabulary, differences, UK. Here we go. This is the Business Insider. Ha, this is interesting. How do you say three? If you drop the TH and say something like free, you're probably from London or the Southeast. Scotland and Ireland have a strong prefer preference for the TH version. So this is interesting. Um, let's zoom in so we can see the map a little bit better and extend it out. How does that look? I'll get rid of the image. There we go. That's better, isn't it? So they, I sometimes do this, um, people all over the UK do it. It depends on where you live, but we can see here that a uh, percentage of people who don't say three, but they say free. Sometimes I'll say with instead of with. It's common in, or it's common all over the, the English speaking world. It's better to say the TH and it's something that I more or less do all the time now. But I wish you could zoom in a bit. Oh, there we go. So I'm from Preston and you can see people in Preston, it's probably around 25% of people in Preston drop the TH. But it's very common near London, especially East London and Essex. And I, in fact, I know some people from Essex and they do that. That's an interesting one. This was the 1950s and uh, 60 years ago, less people said free, free. So it's become more common. It's become more common now. Sorry, I'm just, YouTube star Shelby Church breaks down how much money a video with 4 million views made her. I'll have a look at that later. He says that the influence of London and the South East has spread Southern pronunciations over the rest of the country. That's interesting. Oh, this is the big one, as they say. I have a scone or scone. Um, so how many people, this is a, the key part, how many people say scone? gone when it rhymes with gone so you have a scone or a scone most people by the looks of things say uh scone especially especially in scotland and ireland but around here more people say scone no. Yeah, scone. More people say scone around here. I think I say scone. <laughs> we'll look at that later. Um, let's 
let's just do some other one. All right. Aha. How do you say arm? If you pronounce the R, you're probably from Ireland or Scotland. If you say it more like arm, then you're from England. That's what I was talking about before. So you can see, wow, in England and Wales, more or less everyone drops the R sound. But you'll notice around Lancashire, there's a little bit of this here. And I was researching this and it used to be more common. And it's more like arm. And also in the Southwest, this is common as well, arm. Driving my tractor. No, that's terrible. But there, there's this, <laughs> there's a stereotype of people around Bristol, the Southwest, that they have this farmer's voice, but they use the R sound. And some people in Preston do as well. You see Blackburn especially. So they'll, they'll use the R sound, but this is roticity again. Especially in Ireland, parts of Scotland, they'll, they'll use the, the arm, arm in Ireland, Ireland, arm, instead of arm. So that's a map that shows just the different, the huge difference between England, Wales and Scotland and especially Ireland. So I'm going to go back to the chat. Um, people are chatting to each other, which is cool. The more I watch you, Jack, the more I like how you teach. Well, thank you so much. It's interesting when you say H, it's not silent. I've always heard an H silent. I think it depends on the word. Fascinating. What is this website? I'm going to leave the link in the in the chat for you to have a look at. Wow, it's a long link. Oh, I can't paste the link because it's too long. I'll put it in the, the description after the lesson, okay? Okay. Let me just shorten this so it looks a little bit better. Y yes, so... 60 years ago, people in Newcastle, the Southwest, and also Lancashire used to say the R sound more often. Okay? So that's interesting. Now, how do you say butter? If you think ut rhymes with put, then you're from the north of England. But if you say it with a lighter touch and the two words sound different, then you're definitely not a northerner. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Northern England. Butter. Put. Interesting. This is a good one as well. How do you say last or last? If you say it with a short vowel to rhyme with asp, then you're from the northwest or northeast. Last. 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 But if you say it with a posh way, like last, then you're from the home counties or possibly Scotland. So, home counties, counties near London. Um, you can see the difference here. So, basically 100% of people here, where I'm from, say last. Fast, last, laugh. But if you're from London, you'll say fast, laugh last bath you can see the difference it's an, that is such an interesting one to me it's really interesting valentina says are we going to wrap up soon need to do other things almost two hours jack well let's end at two hours okay let's finish at two hours Lolly lolly, I, I love the posh accent. It's kind of fun. Wow, that was a difference in the 1950s. Just like complete divide. Interesting. New. How do you say new? 
if you say new rather than new oh new 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 um it doesn't that doesn't really make sense we'll come back to that one yes yes this is what i was saying before how do you say tongue if you pronounce the g then you're from bolton or preston i am from preston everyone else gives it a soft ng sound I told you that is so i've not seen that before i need to save save this but yeah I, i'll say tongue uh, tongue tongue or long 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 because so many people on my videos have told me hey that's not the way you say it. But I knew it was right. And also in New York as well. So people in New York say it as well. So it's very regional. Regional. How are we doing in the chat? How are we all? Are you well? How's it going? I think you're running low on your beverages. Yep, I'm running low. I'm running out tiny bit of coffee left yep I'm out I'm out of drinks now to be out of I'm out of drinks I'm out of beers I'm out of coffee I'm out of means we don't have any left I'm so pleased I found this long back in the day the hard G let's just say long was much more common in Stoke and Merseyside. Ha! Huh. So in Liverpool, you used to say long, a long time. And in Stoke, come on, Stoke. That's a bit, let's find another interesting one. Americans call the October season fall, but no one in Britain says that today. We call it autumn, as this map shows, but it, but there is a plot twist coming up. So no one says fall. Back in the 1950s, people in the West Country in Hull said fall rather than autumn. How interesting. So people used to say fall in Hull, the East Coast here, and also the West Countries in Bristol. It's terrible. How interesting is that? I didn't know that. Okay, while fall lost the war in England, it succeeded in America. Probably fall was a way of describing autumn that was brought to America. And as it happens, that was a dialect ver variation that won in America. Whereas over here, it was autumn. And that's it. How interesting. I need to share that. I need to make sure more people know. More people know. That is super interesting. Good. Love your life class so vivid and no distance. You are so great. Thank you so much. I love giving these live lessons. They're the most fun. I find them the most fun to me. Okay, well, with all that in mind, let's wrap up. Let's just start finishing the lesson, but stay around, stay with me. Because here is, check this out, to fluency.com, English phrases for cars and driving. You can watch the video on that page, and then you can read and learn the sentences. If you are new here, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so then you uh, so then you know the next time I go live and I'll pop it in here don't leave me just yet Valentina and then if you want to join the program the to fluency program go sometimes it's hard to copy and paste links here. Okay, to fluency.com slash TFP.
Everybody, again, thank you so much for being here. Like and share this lesson. Turn on notifications so you know next time I'm going live. I'm going to end the stream here. It's been so good, so good to spend this day with you. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.